Okay, so my name is Naimi, and I'm a PhD student in Near Eastern Archaeology at the University of Strasbourg, and I'm working part-time at the German Archaeological Institute in Istanbul. For my PhD, I analyze a district from Hattusha, uh, the Bronze Age capital of the Hittite in Central Anatolia, Turkey, so far for self-promotion. In my talk, I'm going to explore the ways free software influences the practice of reuse and mixing of knowledge in archaeology. This general framework of reference will provide the background to the closer at the impact of reproducibility, for which I will show some examples. But first of all, some words on my motivation. Many discussions with colleagues brought me to the conclusion that free software and the benefits are not well understood. Even if free software are well established inside and outside academia, the benefit and the advantage of free software, that is a free as in free speech, and not the free as in free beer, are not acknowledged. As a young scientist and a PhD candidate, I need to be prepared to make a strong statement to define my opinions and the reason why I use free software for my PhD. I'm grateful to the organizers of this session for the opportunity to take a bigger look at this picture. So let me briefly outline my talk. We will progress as follows. First, I will introduce the notion of scientific community. Then, I will concentrate on the similarities between scientific community and free software community. In the third point, I will examine the concept of reuse, modulation, and reproducibility in archaeology. Uh, for will, uh, we show two examples, and then I will send the main arguments in a conclusion. Um, so, what is a scientific community? And I present scientific community in order to stand out the similarities and the difference with free software in the second part. Science is cumulative even if, not, if it is not clear how exactly scientific knowledge accumulates. In any case, it's a community endeavor. Matmite chose to represent human knowledge at the circle in his webcomic, What is a PhD? New knowledge, like a PhD, should extend the boundary of knowledge. In this process, the scientific community brings different point of view. This makes the, science, the scientific knowledge accumulating and becoming stable faster. And I choose the word stable knowledge to avoid truth in reference to the process of establishing a fact. And I refer here to the words of Bruno Latour and others. Scientists from diverse backgrounds bring many points of view to resolve scientific problems. They choose to investigate different questions or they may approach the same question in different ways. A diverse community invigorates problem solving, um, generates new research methods, explanations, ideas, and sheds new light on problems. Science benefits from practitioners with diverse beliefs, backgrounds, and values to check out the biases. So we judge the function serve as a community. Quickly summarize, the scientific community serves three functions that we can all observe in this session. First, it's a pool of inspiration. Interaction encourages innovation and spark ideas about new lines of evidence, new applications, new questions, and alternate explanations. Secondly, it's a motivating force for recognition and respect from peers. Thirdly, scientific community controls the quality of the scientific research by scrutinizing the work of others. It's a system of check and balances that assures that claims are not fraudulent. So I would like to recapitulate on the scientific community. It's a communication and the open process inside the community that make it stronger. It's not the claim of a unique researcher that makes science strong and really able, but true scrutiny and critics of the peers. After this look on the scientific community, we'd like to move on the free software. Free software shares a lot of characteristics with science. 
both have scrutiny and cumulative knowledge that can be seen in process like peer reviewing, open data subject to validation and replication. In free, so in free software community, like in science, there is a strong culture of credit and civility, reputation, and communication. But similarities between free software and science should not hide the differences. The similarities make it easier to compare both communities to better understand them and the way they are structured. Then it is the dissimilarities that help better understand how they work. Free software impresses due to the size of the project, indirect cooperation with people all around the world, the way projects are developed, maintained, contested, and how ideas are exchanged. And these dissimilarities challenge in return what is taken for granted in science. The concept of modifiability is without any doubt the most fascinating concept among the dissimilarities between science and free software. Books and articles have acclimatized science making with stable knowledge. The impression given by books or articles is that you have a definitive version in your hands, and archaeologists speak mostly of end publication. But free software Practices like forking, new versioning, cloning, constant evolution of source code question this concept. Um, on top of this drawing, a representation of the current way of doing research with a stable knowledge, results are only used when it's stable. At the bottom, a prospect on how software development looks like and how science could be made. The, progress of sh the process of sharing knowledge and reusing it's becoming more dynamic. However, this poses a question. If the content does not need to be stable anymore, and I use this like free software, how should the authority, stability, and reliability of knowledge be assessed? It is in this sense that free software challenges the power of knowledge. New practice of publication with the appearance of new information technologies renders the knowledge more dynamic. Wikipedia is the most famous example with content that can be updated, changed, deleted, copied, forked at any time by anyone. The last 10 years have seen a complete revaluation of Wikipedia at the university. 10 years ago, as I saw it in France, it was mostly rejected as an untrustable source. For example, as I started, as I started to, uh, as undergraduate, Professors were more or less forbidding to use Wikipedia, but some years after, uh, this, the same professor explained how to use it, and some years after, they started to contribute to Wikipedia. And Wikipedia reveals how exactly the system of evaluation of knowledge is. Free software shows how the system of evaluation is not challenged. Even if there is a growing discussion on dynamic publication, there is still few examples of workflow in academia. However, some models have been proposed, and I just sit here the model of Eric Kansa and others about push and publish dedicated to archaeology. Free software asks how authority is established and questions the finality of publication. Content in constant dynamic, the biggest strength of free software, gives the opportunity to better challenge the stability of science. And most importantly, if the focus is not only on the results, that is stable knowledge, then free software moves the attention to how evidences are established and focus consequently on the workflow. And here is a point where I will turn back to archaeology. I talked about free software to see how it influences science making, to expose precisely how free software attracts the attention not only on the results, but on the how-to. Free software is the only way to reconcile the process of making science with the results. It is with the sense in mind that I will look at reproducibility in archaeology. Reproducibility allows anyone to start from the same data, check all the process in order to verify the results. In this slide, I show how reproducibility is possible with the software R using literate statistical analysis. 
starting with IDs and data, all the processes are knitted together. In archaeology, there is no culture of exchanging code for reproducibility until now, even if it started changing. If, and if we turn back to the definition of science, however, reproducibility and sharing of code is even the sine qua non for science, to permit the community to scrutinize the work. And I quote here, finally, we often forget that scientific knowledge is reliable not because scientists are more clever, objective, or honored than other people, but because their claims are exposed to criticism and replication. The code is necessary to critique, explore, and reuse the work. Reproducibility is one of the key aspects that challenge science, and I will now expose the benefits for archaeology. Besides to be a better practice of science, and with a huge potential for empirical research, especially in archaeology, reproducibility is important for, first, pedagogy, and second, growing community borders. First of all, free software has a pedagogical aspect that you cannot find with other software. To read the code, and more precisely to read commented code, allows to learn quickly. Some say it's about free software. In pedagogical terms, Windows is to fish as unique is to fishing lesson. One of the most classical books in free software is Alliance Commentary on Unix 6 edition. This is a commentary of the version 6 of Unix that has been used by thousands of students to understand how Unix works. Making literate programming gives the opportunity, and I quote here Donald Nutt, to concentrate on explaining to human beings what we want a computer to do. Literate programming gives the opportunity to concentrate again on the process. And the following are examples for archaeology, and I speak again mostly of R because it's one of the software that know the best. Um, there is our companion to quantifying archaeology by Stefan Shannon, made by David L. Carlson, and that's a comment with code of the work of Shannon that make easier to access the knowledge. Most importantly, it allows them to modulate the code to use it quickly for your own research question. And another example would be the quantitative archaeology from the wiki at EOSA.IT is based exactly on the same uh, principles with explanation of books and code for archaeologists and that offers the possibility of reuse and modulation. In pedagogical terms, reproducibility is a big help to approach different knowledge. And this practice, practice fits perfectly in a do-it-yourself workflow. In this case, availability of code and comment make learning of statistics for archaeologists more experimental. Even if the curve of learning is steep, it's not a wall. Free software and archaeology should be more often stressed as a paradigmatic pedagogical object. And I think there is a lot of advocacy that should be done with this line of argumentation for screening of free software. So now we move to my second point on the challenge provided by free software, that is, growing borders. As I show at the beginning of my talk, community is important for mixing ideas, innovation, and motivation. The modularity of free software is the blowing of academic borders in unpredictable ways. As an example, I present my work uh, on Hittite seals, so it can be accessed on GitHub. I started a project on seals, created a database, and made the analysis with R and I was mainly working on multivariate analysis. I presented my work during an R conference in Lyon in 2013, and I earned a lot of feedback. And I think it is in sense that the using of free software pushes to communicate with informal and wider communities. Free software and free software communities provide a common language and a common goal through which foreign disciplines are revisited. Eventually, the data set, the code, and my questions served for a bachelor thesis in statistical modeling from Ellen Lombard and Liz Radoski at the University of Toulouse. <coughs> then they sent me the results with the code, and we are now contributing to transform our work into an online repository. And the work is still ongoing, but you can access this on GitHub. 
And this example shows that borders are not just blurred in one way, that is, uh, archaeologists need statisticians, but in the other way around too, that is, statisticians gain at looking data through the eyes of archaeologists. Reproducibility, that is, the exposing of process with the results, transforms the possibility of modulation of knowledge. By providing a common language, free software creates new transversal community that makes science stronger. In this presentation, I wanted to explore the relation of free software with archaeology. It's a first try for me to give a bigger picture, and it's mainly based on my own practice. I hope to have been able to show some of the effect on free software in archaeology and the perspective that are open. Free software challenges the authority of science and provides a means to transform archaeology by questioning transmission and reuse of knowledge. Reproducibility makes all the research pipeline available to the scrutiny in the community by reconciling data, process, and results. Finally, I would like to stress our responsibility to make further advocacy for of free software in archaeology and to make it louder of these three points. Free software makes science stronger, it's a pedagogical object, and it encourages innovation. Thank you for your attention.